Good morning, Mr. Lama. You have just presented the second edition of Brand Magic that will be held here in uh, Sovietel Imperial, I think in April, the 7th of April, with yes. five great international and speakers. speakers. Yes. How are, why these people not compared to others? See, the, the, one of the biggest limitations of bringing in international speakers is commitments. Uh, they have their dates blocked. Like, for example, I wanted to get in the CEO of Facebook. She is booked till 2017, so you can't think of touching her. The second reason is, uh, let's face it, Mauritius is a very small island, uh, very small population of 1.2 million. Whenever you bring in international speakers, they like addressing a large audience. There are no numbers in, in Mauritius. So the idea or the, or the way we get around it is to say, come to Mauritius and have a great holiday. And that always works. What are we going to talk about? Brands, branding, or around there will, it? There will be different aspects. Like say, for example, there will, one of the most interesting and important aspects of branding for me is you. Uh, all of us are individual brands. Uh, when you apply for a job, it is brand you who has to stand out amongst all that, all the other uh, competitors. And the way you project yourself, the way you present yourself is what makes you unique and stand out. So beginning from brand you or, or brand me, uh, corporate branding, how do companies, how should companies uh, promote themselves? See, because these days uh, branding is not about logos and all that. It is the whole consumer experience which makes a brand stand out. There will be storytelling on, on branding. Uh, so it will be a complete package. It's, it's a mix. So, uh, I've seen that uh, you're talking about touristing, that uh, touristing about experiences, because we, when we come to Mauritius, we talk about the live the Mauritius experience. Is, is that what we are going to, to talk about? Not the Mauritian experience. They will talk about their the international, experience, yes. their experience, and then for us, for locals, you need to look at it and see how you can adapt those experiences locally. See, because you can always pick an idea and see where can it fit. Uh, the challenge these days for brands is you cannot use the same campaigns in different countries because yes. every country has got its own identity, it's got its own culture. So you need to pick up nuggets to say that, okay, this idea would work here, let me give it a shot. Like for example, I said one of the challenges or limitations which SMEs face in Mauritius, they, see, they say that we don't have any money to advertise. I say you don't need money to advertise these days. When I grew up in advertising, I spent 25 years, the print media was very expensive, radio was very expensive, television was very expensive. But look at the digital world today. Everything is free. You can advertise on Facebook for free. Paid is a separate issue. You can go on Instagram. You can use Twitter. You can use Pinterest. So there is a whole range of media you can use today for free publicity. But the question is how to use it efficiently. This is another issue. No. Now the challenge is to find the right people to guide you. And I believe that there are a lot of people, successful people, who will be willing to share their time, provided you ask. See, unless you ask for help, you will never get it. Ravin, what is the difference between a brand and branding? See, brand is the whole consumer experience of all the elements put together of how the consumer reacts with the brand. And the way you position and market yourself is the branding is the element. There's a lot of rebranding in Mauritius. So you, you, you have been in the press, you, you, yes. have, you have seen maybe one company have changed four or five times their, their logo, their rebranding. Is it working in Mauritius in the perspective where we have a society which is very conservative in a certain way? Uh, this is a difficult question to ask, see, because until you have statistics to back, say, for example, I will not be able to say that, hey, this was a bad idea. The client must have done some research to say that they need to go in for a rebranding re exercise. But unless you, I get those figures, it will be difficult to say. But I do agree with you that a lot of companies have gone through this rebranding exercise. And they must have done it for a purpose. From the customer point of view, 
what what is prefer? He, he he knows the brain, so he's brand addict. We can we can say brand addict because, as we see every morning, every every children Mauritius is on Facebook. He's not in Instagram. He's not a Pinterest series. So the branding, let's say, of uh, of Facebook, is is an example to have to go to have your information it's, there. <laughs> it's not a, personally. It's not a, a very good ex, uh, example to <laughs> use because for me. Uh, what Facebook has done is has intruded into the privacy. Nothing is is private anymore, and I think there are a certain boundaries which should be uh, sacrosanct, which should not be in the public domain. But uh, what has happened is there's not been enough education or knowledge which have been shared with teenagers and youngsters to tell them that look, guys that you need to be careful of how you use it. It's an excellent tool to network, but you have to use it in the right way. But how companies are going to use Facebook? Because we, we see that some merchant companies are paying Facebook to have some ads, some sponsored ads, ads on, on, on your page. You can go on, on your page and have the, yes. I don't know, what, what brand in Mauritius. So the merchant community is starting to get into that uh, branding yes. to, have, to have target target audience. Correct. That's very true. See, because Facebook, if you look at it, country is the largest country in the world. If, it, if Facebook was a country, uh, what is happening is now most of the revenue generated on Facebook is coming through their advertising, because Facebook has realized that Facebook today has become a habit. It has gone beyond a brand. Yes. Uh, it's gone beyond a brand, and uh, it's a super super brand. You know, it's very difficult to. Uh, Compare it with anything else because the it's become a part of your daily life. Yes. Now, I, for example, I'm shocked people go to a restaurant, they'll take out the cameras, take a photo of the food, and yeah. it's up on Facebook. Okay. Nothing is private. It is a good thing that uh, Mauritian companies have realized that you can reach a larger number of people uh, through Facebook. See, in, in marketing, selling, and advertising, you need to reach as many people as possible. Uh, the reason, like for example, when we advertise in the print media, there are X number of releases you have to take out because we call what is OTS, opportunities to see. Because unless your consumer sees your ad or your product, he may, may not buy it. So Facebook, I think, for advertising is, is a great medium. During that uh, second uh, brand, uh, in Magic. Brand, brand magic, I'm sorry. You're going to launch the top, uh, more, top 10 Mauritians, so brands. why, why not? Uh, Sometimes we, we think that some brands are Mauritian, but in fact they are not Mauritian. So no. You are going to do, do Mauritian. Mauritian. So, like Mauritian. say for example, uh, Toyota is not a Mauritian. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I agree. <laughs> so we are, like say for example, brands like Devas, uh, there is Vunakaona, uh, what you love. Yes. Hello. And there are a whole lot of other uh, Mauritian brands. Uh, so these, the study will be on these brands. So you, you are touching uh, small SMEs, Visa, yes. SM, maybe Dewa and uh, Vunakaona. Yeah, yeah, they will be, be, be there. So there are a lot of Mauritian teas, which are brands. Boisherie, you are talking Correct. about. Uh, Boisherie, 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 yes. Boisherie. All that. So different categories. Uh, we are looking, but because of the time limitations, we can only give awards to the top three. But we will mention the top ten. Last question: What is the objective of that uh, brand magic, the second edition of brand magic? The objective, so that uh, we are more versed with brand branding to have a, a clearer picture, not a bigger picture. Uh, more than that, I think uh, there's a lot of misconception about branding. You see, you have a lot of conferences and summits on advertising, sales and marketing because it is supposed to be very trendy, very fashionable. Uh, branding which is the most important aspect. You see, because uh, you have what is a commodity, from a commodity it becomes a product, from a product it becomes a brand. Now the transformation from a commodity to a brand is where the magic happens and personally I felt in the number of uh, 10 years I've been here there is a lot of learning which can be learning and unlearning mm -hmm. we've got a lot of lot of wrong misconceptions about branding which we need to correct and we need like for example I'm sorry to say that but when you bring in Mauritian trainers fellow Mauritians will say hey, I know much better than him who is he to tell me but if you bring somebody from outside it's neutral 
so people are more receptive to listening to an outsider because well, they've got a wider uh, international experience. When when you are telling that, that sometimes uh, these trainers, these big guys, see things that we know, but. Why do we need to have someone to tell us about something that we know so that we are able to apply it? See, because the sad fact is, even though you know it, you don't apply it. Yes, because we have a sort of barrier, there is yeah, a barrier. See, that uh, barrier, there are a lot of things, like say for example, I always believe that if you want something, you have to ask. If you don't ask, you won't get. Mauritians don't have the habit of asking. Of asking. I'll give you a very simple example. Uh, when I got married and we were, we went to Europe for a honeymoon, we were at Frankfurt and we were flying back to Kathmandu. We were standing in the economy line. The business counter was empty. So I told my wife, I said, let's fly business class. She said, you're crazy. The fares are very expensive. I said, wait. I went to the counter. There was a lady sitting over there and I told her, I said, look, ma'am, we've just been married. It's been a long flight. I'm very tired. Can you upgrade me? She said, where's your wife? I said, that lady over there, where's your ticket? You upgraded. Now, what did it take me? If I hadn't stepped out of the line, gone to her and said, ma'am, can you upgrade me? See, because it was a 50-50 chance. She would have said yes, she would have said no. If she said no, I would come back. But, and I've tried this technique several places. In, if you go to hotels, ask for an upgrade. 80% of the chance you will get the upgrade. Thank you very much.